Run someone through, Carolyn. Who's there? This is line seven, and this is our friend Neil. Neil, how are you? Hello, Welcome aboard. How are you? Good as gold, Neil. You can hear the hats improving on the side of the by the second. Yes. We are. <laughs> that clash did it for us. What do you want to tell us, Neil? I don't know. I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago about me and me mate um, from Standard Liège. Uh, how big? Oh. How, how big is our listenership? Who was it? What? This is the great man who about? pretended to be a scout. Oh, it's for Neil. For Standard Liège. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, if you don't know who Neil is, uh, Neil. Uh, God and a genius. Neil, tell That's it, all. Very quickly, tell everyone why you were famous last time. Well, because um, my friend. Um, works in Belgium. Um, he got in touch with Standard Liège, sent us some stuff over ties, things like that. Mm -hmm. We end, He then phones the football clubs on and he puts tickets on for us. And they say two for scouts. all intents and purposes, the people at the clubs think that we're scouts or whatever from for Standard, Standard Liège. Liège. And you've actually conversed with Ron Atkinson and, 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 and Kendall and, and all these people. They've even tried to sell your players on yeah. the side and, and you're treated like kings wherever you go because because they, you wear a tie with Standard Liège. And they think you're exactly. bundled with cash. Everyone <laughs> thinks you are from Standard Liège. And a blue blade well. You see, this is, I'm sorry to drag us back here, Dan, but this is why that Newcastle director story doesn't, it, it, of course they do that. If, you know, standard Liège tie, ah, you're from standard Liège, have our centre forwards. The fellow works in yeah, a photo yeah, yeah, yeah. shop. You're using the word have. <laughs> have okay. our centre forwards. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Carry on, anyway, Neil, what's new? Well, we're off to Swindon today. Yeah. We went to Swindon a couple of weeks ago where I was chatting to a director from Manchester City. Yeah. Of course you were. Like name dropping. Yeah. And I was in, uh, just expressing an interest in Uwe Rosler. <laughs> In what? In, in Rubo Rossler. Oh, yeah. And so, you, um, you, and you are you going to make a firm bid today, do you well, think? Well, we're going to Swindon today. I don't know much about Stockport, but Swindon, it was great food at dinner time. They eat sandwiches and stuff like that. So we'll be back. He's now doing it in advance. He's telling you. You, you, you want to get caught. You're the classic jewel. You are. Well, we're going, this is the first time we've ever gone back again. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, did I mention the good soup they have at Wolves? No. no. How, how did you come to sample the good soup of Wolves? <laughs> well, I, that was when I was sat there with a bloke from the FA, David Davis. Yeah. He was sat next to me and oh. said, oh, you know, you've come far and what are you doing? And oh, we're, we're going to a few Midlands clubs, that sort of thing. Or what's the youth team set up like over in Belgium? <laughs> oh, David Davis. And what do you tell them? I just everything off the top of my head, what with me being a carpenter and that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to tell him how to fit kids. Yeah, if only he would ask you, how, how do you get those door drums straight? And then, then you can tell him. Do you ever invent phantom players that are coming up through the ranks? I do. I invent uh, players. And what are they called? What are they called? I saw the Everton-Chelsea game. Yeah. There was a bloke there who swore he played against me. Oh, that's right. You did tell us that. Yeah, you yeah, said something. Yeah, because I always like to say I'm sort of... I played for Bristol City early 80s. And people actually, go... Like, yeah, I think I, I remember, remember yeah. you. I yeah. ligament damage. Oh, of course you did. They, 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 want, they want the surgery that I could have recovered from that. Now, what, what, why are you going back? to Swindon. Why are you doing this? Because I want, I want you to traverse all over the place. And I well, think we should change clubs. I think the standard liaise thing may be leaking well, out. It was a last minute thing, the Swindon thing, because mm. we thought, well, we'll go back there because there was no games. But I mean, with their no premiership games, did I, we, went to, we went to Spurs is a oh, weeks back mm. and I was just sat behind, with, behind Alan Sugar then. <laughs> in the <direction> <laughs> <laughs> he is just, the absolute it's king. So, it's just so funny. As you say about the Newcastle um, directors, it is just so funny the way these fellas come up to you and nobody ever asks. No, nobody. Well, and it's just all awesome long, because sir. Because have got the tie on and sort of say... Yeah, well, you, you, must, you must report back in, uh, next week. No. Oh, it's afternoon. We it's afternoon. afternoon. So ring us at 5.30, won't you? Tell us how we'll, it will do We'll it give you an express number. <laughs> from Swindon, yeah. Uh, uh, see, again, uh, I don't think anyone could ever match you, Neil, but if anyone says, oh, yeah, we've, we've uh, tricked a club before. We want all of those calls, but Neil is the king of this. But Him the other thing, Danny, Go on. Is, is last week as we were coming out, there was a lot of Manchester City supporters there. And yeah. we were, you know, just sort of mingling. Oh, yeah. with, and we, we we told them that we were after Uwe Rosler, so I don't know whether that, that, them will be sort of, you know, they're thinking he's on his way. Well, it is a sad standard. The A showing interest, it sounds very plausible. Well, it yeah. does, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds extremely mm -hmm. plausible. What do you call yourself? Do you use your... Oh, no, no, I won't do that. Yeah, I, that, I just use my name. Yeah, that's right. Yeah? Oh, well, well, no, please, whatever happens, I, ho I hope your uh, being candid with us doesn't lead to your downfall, because this is a superb thing, and if anything shows football up to be the dunderheaded idiot box it is, <laughs> it is a fellow walking No, around. it's a big Dad, business now, Dan. I must tell you this. Go on. Uh, back a couple of months ago, we went to Yeovil, non-league. Yeah. Oh, of course, it was like, know, well, it, to be honest, it was like Glenn Oddle turning up, because no. we were treated like royalty, <laughs> and they... Now, look, here we, we go. Did, we didn't do it, and I do regret it later, but their market marketing bloke did ask one of, asked my mate if he'd like to do the half-time draw. Oh, <laughs> you've got 
have to, you got to. <laughs> oh, you're a hero. We've got to get you on telly. You're the best. You see, poor... I mean, let's, let's, I don't want to make you feel bad about it, because I think they deserve everything they get. But these, these global, with their strained resources, will yeah. still find money in the kitty to entertain some carpenter wearing a standard liaise <laughs> tie. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. Uh, help you. They may as well say, open their wallets you want to help yourself. You want to go to Peterborough, my friend. They've got money to waste on art exhibitions. Yeah, You've got to buy a car there. Anyway, that's Neil. And uh, Neil is, 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 without doubt, absolutely up amongst the top three callers with a wooden bow tie that we ever, ever had. He is magnificent, isn't I don't he? know why I said wooden bow tie. You've not been with the show all the way through. Another letter down. Yeah, got us, we've got to start this because it's going to take a long time, and it's, I think, very fine. Simon Simon Beardsall, Simon Beardsall from Dorking, has taken our recent theme of taking the numbers of squads, and this is one of the great benefits of the squad system, yeah. uh, squad shirt numbers, um, and he supports Chelsea, and he has taken the current Chelsea squad and added their... And, matched up their numbers with pages from his 1981 diary. Right. Okay, very, very good. So, uh, for instance... So, uh, uh, so, we got, so, uh, so, Ed de Hoy is page one of his di the diary, the gotcha. goalkeeper. Oh, I see. So, so he's I'm not done the dates. He's literally gone to the page oh, numbers. Oh, the page numbers. Page uh, numbers. Very good. Very good. They're nice short entries. So, I'm going to give you the Chelsea back four. Right. Leaving out the goalkeeper. Ferrer. We had a bring and buy sale. I brought a celebrity squares game, and I now wish that I hadn't. I missed football training because I had a bad headache. I watched Top of the Pops and Tomorrow's World. Frank LeBeouf. We had to copy a picture out of our, of our, of our, of our singing together. Um, we, watched, uh, seven, we watched Seven Bees Girls do a play, and they made, they made themselves a play that they made themselves. Now all the boys in our class are doing a play for ourselves. The girls are doing it as well. Number six, Desai. I made my own sandwiches. Number 14, Graham Lasso. I got pushed in the mud and ended up filthy. I listened to Elton's tape in the evening, and at school I wrote about my favourite things, like the smell of freshly mown grass, and making a heap of grass and jumping into it. It was a typical day at school. I shall be doing the Chelsea midfield in about 20 minutes. Oh, there's another one there. Okay. Number 7, Goldbeck. We went to Guildford. I got a pair of yellow and blue Nike trainers, tube socks, soldiers, and a book called The Book of Heroic Failures. Number 16, Roberto Di Matteo. We weren't allowed to play with balls in the playground because of the mud. We had drama, maths, handwriting, and something else. I watched circus championships, and everyone else packed to leave for the Isle of Wight, because we are going there tomorrow. Keith came. <laughs> <laughs> oh, certainly more of that later. There's plenty more of that, that yeah. That is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Pages out of his diary as the Chelsea team. I particularly, of course, oh. you know, like, of course, the, the, the uh, excitement uh, knowing that Seven Bees girls had made their own play. Now we're making, the, the boys in my class are making a play. So are the girls. They are doing well. <laughs> they are doing well. I've made my own sandwiches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, was, that was Marcel Dessay. That's all he did that oh. day. All right, bung someone through there. Phil, who's there? This is line three, and this will be Simon. Simon, thanks for hanging on, Julian. Simon, what do you want to tell us? I don't. We're going, I'm going back to old ground here. Remember the old um, players sponsored by weird people? Yes, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Players who individually are sponsored by uh, individuals. Yeah. This should be the final, <laughs> final actual call of the year for you because it's tremendous. <laughs> we'll be the judge of <laughs> that. I like this. Carlton, no, I like this fella. Yeah, go on. Carlton Palmer. Oh, yes. Is sponsored by a car boot sale. What do you mean? Honest program. What does it say? It says Colton Palmer and his sponsors are Burzelden, Market and Car Boot. <laughs> Why is every new Carlton Palmer so funny? Yeah, not, he's sponsored by uh, a car well, boot sale. And they're, 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 let's not put it too fine. It's a jumble sale, isn't it? It's yeah, a jumble yeah. sale. Yeah. He is sponsored by a, a, a company that specialises in the jumble sale. He is sponsored, as a Portsmouth fan, he is sponsored by a car boot sale, in my view. See, do, see, do players have any, any, uh, uh, any say in this? Because I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't know when they said, Carl, wouldn't get, I wouldn't no, accept Danny, it. No, Danny, 30 quid may change hands. Players will take I anything. I suppose so, yeah. He don't care. How can he go to work on Monday mornings with that on his headache? Well, I, I, I think Colton probably, Colton probably got on the, and the company will probably ring up and say, we are the largest sponsor of the fastest growing um, uh, market of uh, uh, bartering within the British Isles and Colton Palmer, first a perfect spearhead for one, and all of that. However, the fact remains, as you say, that his name is now synonymous with Ascot water heaters, um, little noddy dogs for the back of the car. Those strange last that people used to make shoes on. Shoes on, on uh, old TV valves. Hubcaps. Hubcaps, a very, a very poor pottery. Uh, and uh, what's the, uh, the... Oh, and, and her 
herbs grown in little black plastic pots that you have to take home with it. Uh, yeah. and, and puzzles, uh, lots of puzzles with brown sellotape on ball the side. Ball workers. Oh, yeah, ball workers is pretty good there. Uh, albums by David Essex, Leo Sayer. <laughs> 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 a timeless flight by Leo Sayer yeah. is at every car boot sale. We yeah. know that. And uh, what other band was there? ABBA albums. ABBA albums are always there yeah. at car boot sales. Uh, somebody bring us with a top ten list of things found at car boot sales. We'll be right back. And this will be, it must be, it's 12.18, a little later than usual, ladies and gentlemen, it's Joanne. Hello, Joanne. Hi, Danny, hi, Danny. Hello, Joanne. What about this weather, Joanne? What are we going to do about this weather? I don't want to sound like a radio <laughs> phone in but man alive. Where are you, when, I mean, where are you actually, no, 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 <laughs> won't give any pointers out. No. I, I believe I may have asked you once upon a time and that, that'll be enough. How's your week been, Joanne? Oh, it's been very good, Danny. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Now, <laughs> la last time we spoke to you and uh, you were looking Stop for... fiddling with that piece of paper now, Danny. Oh, no. Just calm oh, yourself oh. down. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we spoke to you, um... Yeah. Uh, you do take over, then I've gone. Joanne, I wasn't here last week, so la I, I understand last week that there was um, we were setting up a more complicated social arrangement for yourself. That's right, yes. And, um, uh, and I went to the match um, yesterday, and uh, well, last week, sorry. Yeah. And um, bow right, number right. one and bow number two, as Danny called them, yeah, they're so it's... good. They were playing against each other in a match. Mm -hmm. So I went down to the match, and um, I were saw they, both. Were, of were they them. playing nicely, Joanne? Look at the that... phone lines. They're going. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they think they're going to. They think if I'm the next. Go on after Joanne, I might get to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> the phone lines go nuts when you come on. Sorry, Joanne, yeah, go on. And um, we ran I managed to meet one of them, the new one, bow number two. Yeah. Who, yeah. remember, gave me £50 to buy something fluffy. You didn't hear this. Uh, 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 <laughs> bow, no bow number two was this. Yeah, that's right. Bow number two, and you figure out who it was. Joanne, who's, you know, H of G. Forget really, absolutely new young's heart of gold, Joanne. And uh, he, said, I'm, I'm he gave her 50 quid and said, go and buy something fluffy. Because without giving too much away, Joanne, we so mustn't give too much away. Bit him in the um, ass. Because um, bow number one did play this week, didn't he? He doesn't normally get the first few minutes now, does he? Stop yeah. teasing people just. Cause you know. I know. <laughs> Stop narrowing it down. Okay, so yeah, okay. Gave you fifty quid to buy something fluffy. Yeah, and I arranged to meet him. He rang me after I spoke to you, and we arranged to meet in a pub in mm. the city centre. These are both. Pre if you just joined the show, yeah. these are both Premier League players. Yeah, go on. And I turned up, and they were both there. Of course, they were the both pub. there. <laughs> what was that? Some by, something by chance? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, well, we went and had dinner as together. You in, as you walked in, sorry, Joanne, but as you walked in, they know what she's, she's coming in, she's coming in, she's walking in, she walked in, she's walking 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 in, she's and, oh, it was very nice. Oh, oh man, yeah, but the, 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 uh, the, the hotel had a late licence in the bar, did it? Um, yeah, and also a very nice double bed. Man <laughs> alive. Joanne, yeah. you know, as I say, if, if, ever, well, if ever we do smuggle you into the building, because we don't want the uh, <laughs> hacks outside saying, that's her, and grilling you. Uh, but, you know, uh, Danny and I will treat you like gentlemen. And not the, I, I, I told you last week. I told you I was worried about you last week. Yeah. And I don't mean in this in a, in a patronising, a paternal way. Yeah, they heard, they heard that. Yeah, well, I do. And you, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we know who you are, and we're watching out for you, Joe. Don't we're worry. Chaps. <laughs> no, no, them chaps know that we're chaps, too. And I mean, I'm, I'm not suggesting, remember, you can't look after yourself. But I think, I don't like the way that Bo won, as we yeah. call it. And I'll tell you what, fellas, you get too smug, we might start giving initials out. Yeah. Okay, Bo won. I would warn you that Bo won is, is as hard as nails. Is he? Yes, then he I'm, is. I'm saying these gentlemen have nothing but the highest motives <laughs> and your best interests at heart. Wow. Uh, so, so you spent the night? I did, yeah. And they, did they spend the night or did they have to get up and go home? Um, one stayed till about four o'clock in the morning, the other one stayed right through. Nah, oh um, dear, oh Lord. And we all did some room service and the waiter asked their autograph. Did he? Was embarrassing, yeah. Did he? And they were a bit worried, oh, yeah. So, soon I'll start asking for yours, Joe, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, uh, uh, but, you know, there you go. Um, I'll take this the, uh, oh, there's so, so many questions, <laughs> so, so, many, so many legalities to weigh up. Uh, okay, and let's have a would, oh. would this be the, 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 the first First time you've entertained two, two fellas? It would be, yeah. Fantastic. But it was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're entertaining two fellas right now. Yeah, sure. yeah. There's even more now, Danny. <laughs> oh, all right, now, so, so, and what's, the, what's next on the agenda, gal? Well, I'm going down, there's a rather big match today. Is there? Yeah. Is there? Yeah, yeah, in no, this city here. Okay, right. And um, I'm going to meet bow number two. Boat? Oh, you, you, you cat. You've got, okay, well, you fickle no, cat. No, he bore a fluffy thing, so yeah. what should be yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> He's um, asked me if I'm up for the same again, but with another one. No! Bow number three. <laughs> 
Bo, I can't now listen here. I'll accept Bo's one and two. I'm not accepting any third Bo's coming. Daddy's got this. a 15 year old daughter who might be listening to this. <laughs> Bo number no, three. No, I know what you mean, but just, just, just the two of them. Just the two of them, but both three. Yeah. Oh, and of course, but of course, of course. Now, nah, easy. No, 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 I'm going to break. Isn't there an added complication today, Joanne, as well? Um. Regards. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it because... No, he's up, he's up, he's up. Now, no. this third Bo who's been introduced, do you know him? Um, I don't know him, I've never met him, so I'm going to meet him this afternoon to see if I like him or is he, is, he, is he a very well-known Premier player? He is, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now, uh, uh, eh? Really? Oh, really? Oh, you've told... You've told... Oh, you yeah, always told did Jamie. I? Yeah. Oh, man, oh, Jamie. Does, Jamie will you? be along there as well. Joanne, um, <laughs> as usual, we'll speak to you this evening, we'll find out the state of play. Thank you very much yeah. indeed, sweet pea, and uh, we'll, um, uh, if you ever did, we will, we'll buy a proper a dinner if you ever come down and see yeah, us. absolutely. It really will. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to see a little more of that humour on the air. Thank you very much in there. They're running their own show in there. Yeah, yeah I like it better now. You probably. put your trousers yeah. back on, Jamie. No, this uh, this will have the hacks God, moving this is closer not, to this. Now, is those extraordinary. Are you, those those are fools who uh, who got themselves into trouble two weeks ago over things were said in this show. Now listen carefully. Yeah, listen, listen to here. Listen to you. you. May want to um. Listen, you may want to uh. uh if you got if you got kids, uh, distract them. Turn uh, out for two seconds. But there's nothing graphic. But it's just this is extraordinary. So, uh, Jamie who apparently grills Joanne a lot more thoroughly than we dare do on the air. He said so. The uh the two of them, eh? She went. Yes, that's right. He went. The, 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 these two Premier League footballers didn't not with each other at any point. But that's why I couldn't bear it. The first twenty minutes, that's all they did. I was a bit offended actually. <laughs> what? Huh? Huh? That ain't wrestling, brother. <laughs> that is that ain't no music lovers. That whoa, that's no Ollie Reed grappling. That them no. two fellas. Uh, uh, Jamie, yeah, look, he didn't he tell you that? Apparently so. Now I'm sure and that's not int that's not part of training, boys. He's up. He's up, not part of training. And not once. So when we used I've to... got to say that if, if you and I, Dan, were faced with Joe, and I'd like to say that, can I, I mean, we, yeah. we, we, we let's understand. Let's get this over with now. Let's get this over with now. We understand exactly that. That's yes. right. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing like, yeah. no, no, no. I, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, well, that... No, <laughs> you, well, that's... You, yeah. you, you've been offered the opportunity once in the past. Oh, Remember that story? Oh, oh, man, don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a couple yeah. of, I've, I've been... A, I've had, I've yeah. had my gay following. Yes, I know, but... but, but uh, a member of a particular pop group. Oh, exactly. Oh, don't. That was a superb thing. Oh, that was the enemy years. Another time Danny and I do a show about... If uh, only we had a place for road. those stories. Line six, and this will be Dave. Dave, thanks for getting hanging on. You've got the unenviable job of following Joanne this week. Dave, what do you want to tell us? How are you? Good as gold, Dave. It's obvious that you have a bit of influence in getting adverts for players. You yeah, kind of. How about my team? Aberdeen, I'm an Aberdeen supporter. Okay. They're in very H. good shape just now, aren't they? Preparation H. I mean, I think that's what they need, because that's... They, 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 you, you're saying they're sponsored by them, or you no, think they I, should I, be? I think they should be advertising. Yeah, they should. Yeah, at the uh, moment. Oh, they, they're real bad, are they? Oh, that's... Well, we're that, not, that's, we're not very good. We have been better, and we will be better soon just, just all I mean to say about this is they're a very remote club, but other clubs can smell them miles and miles <laughs> away. <laughs> they are stinking the whole country up, aren't so, they? So what did you call us for, sir? Colour blindness. Oh, right, okay, go on. Aberdeen supporter... Morning of the game, Dundee versus Aberdeen at Den Park. Right. Looking forward to it. 11 o'clock it starts snowing. But the ground's soft, the game's on, yeah. the fans are out cle clearing the lines, and they start with a red ball. Right. The rain comes on, the grass turns green, and I have to go home because I can't, can't see the, see the ball. ball. Can't see the ball. Nope. I had a pie and went home. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, the ball became invisible. I thought when it was in the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. unbelievable. Oh, it's absolutely true. I thought the, the, the ball they start with is orange, not red. Yeah, but even so, that's a separate thing. Yeah. Well, listen, how do I know it's orange? I know. So I'm, I'm just trying to help you with this. Okay, so thanks. give us the pen over there. This is in the pot. Okay, <laughs> that's it for next week. Now, hang on one second here. Uh, Watch Wimbledon. Hold on one second. So, so the yeah. game starts. So it comes down. Right, 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 right. And Aberdeen were playing Dundee. Dundee Dens Park, yes. And, and you lost track of it entirely. Completely. I could see the ball when it was in the air. I saw goalkeepers running about and doing things. I had not got a clue. You were looking for the net to bulge, weren't you? Just this, this is like, so this is like, uh, 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 you're a human spot the ball thing. You're actually thinking, well, there's two players running, that's it. Oh, and you had to leave? I had, oh, I left. It was a waste of time. It was, it was so, so surreal. I had to leave. I just couldn't believe it. I would pay good money to watch the 22 players playing without the ball. I really think... going for it, though, you know. But the Acting... thing is, there are so many players making runs that you've no idea where the ball is at all. <laughs> can, 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 did, were Aberdeen playing in all red? 
I believe they were playing in, in, in old red in those days, yes. Yeah, so, so below the knee they must have disappeared uh, as well. No, funnily enough, <laughs> you can see that, that colour of red. Yeah. But you couldn't see but the, the orange, shape, well, orange, the oh, snowball, you friend, know. this is a superb, superb call. It's a thank you very, that's exactly what we had in mind oh, when we asked for colour blindness. And f it can't be better. The ball disappeared all running around. It's like you say, if you did that, it would cost you millions in technology to remove the ball yeah. from every frame of a football match. It would. And he's seeing it. What a great call. Whenever we get them from the earth and the jocks, I've got to say, they're, I mean, the old the, the, the cardboard bow tie was one of them. Yeah, That's a superb yeah. call. What's that, Dan? Got any other? Oh, yeah. Sit back. Okay, what have we got? <laughs> Poet. Oh, no, this is this. <laughs> in the diary relating to squad numbers. Ch Gustavo, I think it's time, because we're nearly, we're nearly out, mm. aren't we? Gustavo Poet. Keith came. We played Atari and went to the woods to find golf balls. <laughs> By the way, we went on our bicycles there. I stayed up and watched Holiday on the Buses in Mum's room. <laughs> this, this, see, Alan Bennett gets paid a fortune for this sort of stuff. <laughs> Dennis Wise. In the morning, I played against White Bush. We won 7-3. One is spelled O-N-E. He's left in the original spelling as well, right. which is why I'm stumbling over some bit. I played for the under-12s. I scored two goals. <laughs> At 2 o'clock, I went to Jason's party. We had a football match and played a hide-and-seek game. We also played 40-40 in the dark. I gave him some booty. I matched the City team. What's 40-40? Don't know. Don't no, know. Gotta have a, somebody give us a call. What is 40-40 in the dark? 40 there's a, There is a tremendous amount of football going on this person's well, that's, I was just thinking that, you know, yeah. these days when they say, oh, we're resting David Beckham, we don't want to overtime. He played in the morning, then he went to a party, played more football. And then played hide and seek <laughs> and 40 40 straight yeah. after it. They say, you puffs, this is out the play. What's 40 40? Baby Yarrow. I watched Swap Shop in my dressing gown and I played with a sponge ball. Chris and I did some recordings of drummings that we did ourselves. <laughs> All boys have recorded themselves drumming at some stage. I also wrote a, wrote a beat on paper, and we played that. I would have run in the county championships, but I was too young. <laughs> That must have brooded, all day brooded on that. I could run in those county championships. <laughs> Just sitting there, I mean, as grown middle-aged men, it's been a long time since I sat indoors fuming that somebody won't let me take part in a sporting event. And also writing down some drum beats to record with his mate. drum beats? I don't know. The county championship, I could run in that, but they won't let me. Gianfranco Zola. I went to West Humble to play a, a match, a, a cup match, in fact, against South Park. Hooray! Yay! I was sub, but Ian got hurt in the ribs after the first 15 minutes, so I played the rest of the game. We won 8-0, but an improvement on the 12-1. I watched Holiday. Holiday? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tor Andrew Flo. I had a football match at school. We lost 5-1 to eight men. I scored our goal. It was, a, it was a curler across the goal. The match finished five minutes early, for the rain was pelting down. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Gianluca Viali. I watched Superstars, and at school we saw the rest of Mr. Blunder. I did the first cover of my poetry anthology and a few poems. I did a plain page just inside the cover saying, What, are, what you are about to see is a poetry anthology written, created, and selected by me. <laughs> Who is that? Do you reckon Zola? Oh, that's that's Viali. Viali. Now, the, you know, the, the absolutely... The line here, which you, 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 you could write a short story around, and at school, we saw the rest of Mr. Blunder. <laughs> yeah. What? What is Mr. Blunder? You, well, it's you know about these, yes. No, what, uh, uh, the amazing Mr. Blunder, it can be. Oh, yeah. It might no, be no, that. Yes, it or maybe there's a teacher who, through colour blindness, they only see half of. <laughs> yeah. He changed his strip, and so today, saw they the... saw the rest of Mr. Blunder. I don't, but what's his name? Read that fella's name out again. No, oh, it's Simon Beardsall in Dorking, and, and that's that a pure yeah. spun goal. Uh, let's do this letter yeah. here. Okay, I have news for you all. Trevor Steele is cancelled this week. I'm replacing him with this letter. Right, okay. Everybody with the music, with the Trevor Steele music. Yeah, okay, here we go. It's from Stephen Marks of Coventry. Okay. Further to your story about someone dying at a football match. Oh, oh no. That's nothing. Oh, no! Four of us, myself, my dad, his friend, and his friend, travelled down from Coventry for the Coventry Spurs FA Cup final in 1987. Just before we pulled off the M1, my dad's friend's father had a seizure and died. Uh, Not wanting to miss the only opportunity we would probably oh ever no. have of seeing Coventry oh in the Cup no. final. Shut up. <laughs> we left the corpse in a sleeping pose in the car park oh, of Stanmore no. Tube Station. No, no, no. Even as we talked about it today, we still think we made the right decision. No. They, they propped the body up in a, as though it was asleep. What was, in his, the car what was park. his relation with this man? He's his father's friend. A family friend of years and years yeah. standing. 
was outweighed by Coventry pitching up at Wembley. They put him as they were asleep in the car in Stanmore Car Park and they went to the match. Well, I hope they left the window open because it, it was a very sunny day, as I remember. It was, yeah. Have, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> has he signed it? Stephen Marks from Coventry. Stephen Marks? <laughs> yep. Now, I, 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 I don't know where to go with it. You put, they put him in the discussion they must have had. Yeah. It's what old Ted would have wanted leaving yeah. there. Oh, it's pure Stephen King, the discussion, isn't it? Yeah. And they left him while Coventry went on. Yep. We left the corpse in a sleeping pose in the car park of Stanmore Tube Station. Right, thank you very much indeed. That, that, that's what you meant when you got that fact. You went, oh no, <laughs> superb. Well, there it is. The, as I say, we he replaced Trevor Steele, but we are having the new spin on pies towards the end of the show. Okay, right. John Hart is probably going to get missed out as well. Well, now. well the next week, of course, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Listen what? to this. I got a. I, I, this is the one where I told you earlier on. This story is kind of cute and sweet. It's accompanied by a drawing that I want you to oh, see. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Um, this is, is it, it's, it's ideal because we're continuing our, our business about um, about goal scoring. This is from Dean, who appears to be in Wimbledon. Some years ago, uh, something happened to me which was similar to what occurred in Madrid on Wednesday. Seems unlikely because it's a semi-final of the European Cup versus Dean in Wimbledon. <laughs> My friend and I decided to build a goal using bamboo sticks and string. In Wimbledon? Yeah. Nah, no, 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 out of the country, out of oh, the country. This is exactly yeah. what I had in mind when yeah. I said, tell us stories about Check goals. This, uh, this is great. Four bamboo uh, uh, sticks were used. Um, two as goalposts and two as stanchions. Even though he didn't have a net, string was tied from one post to the other for a crossbar. So you've got it now. Yeah, yeah. Two goalposts, two stanchions. The crossbar used to be string, as, didn't it? as it, it was it, in the cup, early cup finals. Hundred yeah. years ago. Now, for stability, string was then tied from the goalposts onto the fence which separated the park we were in from a field with some horses. Right. And, and I pause <laughs> there. I pause there for the more imaginative of you <laughs> to, 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 to work ahead. The goal was <laughs> the goal was just great and appeared to hold up from uh, for most efforts at goal. Yeah. However, the horses that occupied the field were very tame, and upon seeing people, proceeded to wander over. Apples, sugar lumps, the uh, yeah. the getting for for the one. They watched us playing football, and as if they were getting bored, started to scratch their necks on the fence, which our goal was tied to. Mm -hmm. The goal wobbled and subsequently started to collapse. Very similarly to Wednesday night. Right. Okay. There's okay. the letter. And that's yeah. fine, isn't it? That's very good. Letter. Good. Yes, yeah, it's a great. Letter. Without, it's a great letter. Without the accompanying drawing, which I have to say, uh, I'll show, you can turn it over slowly and catch it. All right, here we go. I'm turning it over. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those horses and that fence. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever seen. I've saved the oh, boy. Man, the <laughs> How can I bring this across to you? <laughs> It, 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 it's just like saying Spike Milligan draws. The horses <laughs> look like, I mean, if, if he'd have said those, those were terriers, yeah, they, your West Highland yeah. terriers. Westies. He's put, it's got tiny little legs. <laughs> that's, that's nothing like a horse. It's a very elaborate drawing, isn't it? And, and it has arrows and things on it. Saying horses. <laughs> horses feel this way. And he's put up these things which plainly are West Highland terriers, as if drawn by a six-year-old child. Big round eyes with dots in the middle, like they're <laughs> like they're whacked out on E, looking at us, a little sort of saying, horses, string, bamboo sticks, mesh fence, and... The fence is great. Yo, look at this down here. What does he put next to the round thing? Ball. <laughs> Danny Baker and the News of the World. Yeah, this is the return of Trevor Steeles, our resident comedian. Right, we, okay. We missed this fax last week. It didn't come through because of the machine for some reason. But you say it, these are good. No, I've, I've changed my mind. Um, All right, so we need the... Uh, CH Furnishing Limited, he works for... Can we have the... Uh, correct, Graham, then, please. Yeah. Can we have the... Uh, death? Yeah. The death. I've, got to go back to, I've got to go back to um, <coughs> a few weeks ago when we had the, we, we, the phrase come on the show, any more pies... Right, now. Okay. Explain greedily to the listeners what any more pies Any more pies was we're looking for the greediest football in Britain. It turns out that Jeff Astle and his wife, it, it turns out, uh, were freeloading to such an extent and uh, ignoring the company they were with who had won a night out with them. And the only thing Jeff was really enthusiastic was the phrase, any more pies. Well, this is Trevor's idea of what various other famous people may well have said. Mm -hmm. David Beckham to Posh Spice, any more thigh, the American nation to Bill Clinton, any more lies, Cyclops, any more eyes? Mrs. Sylvester Stallone, any more sly? Chicken licking, any more sky? Will Carling, any more tries? John Le Carre, any more spies? Dicky Bird, any more buys? J.R. Hartley, <laughs> any more flies? All Welsh women, 
Any more dies? Winnie the Pooh? Any more... <laughs> <Don't go. laughs> Any more hives? And finally, Henry VIII. Any more wives? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether that was brilliant or whether it was the worst thing I've ever heard. I think I think it's pretty brilliant. <laughs> yeah, but no, knowing him as we do, you see, he, this isn't working flat out. This is not blank postmodern irony. No, this here. is way out of the edges of his imagination. He's taken him all night to do this. I must say, by the time we got to Dickie Bird any more buys, the idea of Dickie Bird asking if there were any more buys. Any more highs in area there? <laughs> well, I, I think, yeah. I think that is very, very good. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, for the well, love chicken, of God. And also, chicken licking any more sky. That, 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 that is one that if ever you did uh, try to write a review or an appraisal list and put in, and then Danny Kelly read a list out, including the <laughs> phrases, I'm afraid it wouldn't get you one extra listener. And the phrase you had to be there, I hope, applied to that, because yeah, when good. it started, I thought, oh, this is really <laughs> awful. And by after six or seven, I started thinking, this is one of the greatest things I've ever heard. You might read it again this evening. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> All right, uh, bug someone through. Who's there? Before we come on here today, Danny said, we now have a new mean footballer. I said, that can't happen. He said, it's extraordinarily mean. Let's just remember the bus thing very quickly. Let's remember, at the start of this season, uh, Tottenham Hotspur had Emmanuel Petit, now the driving force of the champions of England, yeah. over to the ground, having watched him 30 times last season, Jerry Francis. Petit goes over to Spurs. Yes, you know the yeah. story? No, no. And uh, he's ready to sign the dotted line. And... Uh, and Jerry Francis said, oh, I don't know, Emmanuel, I'm, let's leave it, let's leave it a week and uh, I'm going to think about this because he could not make his mind up. And Emmanuel Petit said, uh, in that case, could I have the taxi fare, please, back to my hotel? And Spurs gave him £15, get back to the centre of London, and he drove straight to Highbury and signed there. He, he got a taxi paid for by Tottenham Hotspur. Yo, oh, back, come on, Jack, come back. on, it's too back. good. No, no, that, that, I told you that earlier in the season as well. No, you, I, we no, didn't know I he was there. No, that's the fact. That Emmanuel Petit, uh, he said he couldn't have the he money. He took again. Tottenham money to get a cab to Arsenal. To Highbury and signed up there with his old mate, um, Mars and Banger. So he is something of a lion Judas in a very kind of a bleak uh, way, no, isn't he? Yeah. He, he, he? He is larging at Judas. He I'm is saying, an yeah. absolute larging at Judas. Okay. Oh, Neil, on line 10, it's our own correspondent, oh, Neil. I can't uh, be excited now, so much. Neil. Hello. Welcome back. You are the star of the airwaves. You're the person <laughs> we're waiting for. This is Neil, by the way, who pretends to be from Standard Liège. Uh, today you were on your way to Swindon and you were ballyhooing it, sir, begging to get caught. You oh, were like Jack sending off a letter written in blood saying, <laughs> Old Jack won't catch me, catch me yet, sir. I snipped off her ears. They was very tasty. Yours from hell. Anyway, uh, so um, uh, you, went to, you went to Swindon today, did you? I did indeed. Dan, and what commissioner have treated me fantastic oh, as I was <laughs> again. Okay, so they didn't suspect at all that they you're just... Think, every think, detail, Neil, every day hotel, I think, please. I think, to be honest, I'm, I'm pushing it a bit now with Swindon. I've Go gone on, there twice. What did you do today? Spoke to the youth team boss, mm -hmm. and their under-16s are touring Belgium oh, in, right. the, in the pre-season. Swindon's are? Yeah. Okay, and now when he said that, you must have swallowed a little hard. Big didn't gulp, you? Yeah, um, sweaty something. palms, but um, told him, gave him standard Liège's number and asked him to give me a ring if we can sort out a friendly... Um, yes, sir! Ah, uh, now, the worst thing, the terrible thing here is that often, I, you know I'm with you every step of the way, yeah. but he's going to go up to his under six and say, now kids, now don't get, but go home and ask him, you, you know, we're going to be playing <laughs> standard liaison. I'll go, yeah, because some chippy told me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened at the game? Did you get a half-time uh, beverage? It was Volivon's half-time. Was that? Uh, yeah, very good. nice too. Yeah. Very nice. How, would it, how would it compare with the good soup of Wolverhampton? Nothing beats Wolves, yeah. I, I must admit. Mm -hmm. Nothing beats Wolves. And, and what kind of uh, people were you rubbing shoulders with? Just generally directors? Local contractors that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and to be honest, it was, you know, I, I was thinking perhaps I could get myself some chippy and work here as well, but... <laughs> that, that'll be your downfall. Best that's somebody... It will. Best talk football, but yeah. to be honest, I'm starting to believe it as well now. To be oh. honest, I'm revelling in it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... As I say, just got didn't meet a lot of the players afterwards because obviously I had to rush back to you know try and get on the show and that. Sort well, of thing. I, I appreciate your sacrifice in that respect. But um, you... Was chatting to some. I think he, he was involved in with the reserves and the youth team. Mm. Um, didn't catch his name, <laughs> but I was telling him about a young, pro <laughs> a young prospect that we've got is Pierre Vosberg who plays for. Um, 
Christ under the yeah, age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is just the name we made up on the car going up. I bought that. I bought that. Yeah. I thought, I thought, oh, no, I looked at Dan and he looked at and I, yeah. usually Dan goes, oh, you're Pierre Vosberg. That sounds, of course Pierre Vosberg is an up-and-coming kid at Standard Liège. Standard Liège. How much would you accept for Pierre? Oh, well, to, oh, anything, really. Probably, I think we'd be looking at, a, you know, a million plus for him. Yeah, yeah. And the um, kid, was he 16, 17? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But I think, to be honest, looking at the, looking at Stockwood, uh, Stockport and Swindon, nothing really there that can, you know, enhance the squad at all. No, really. really, yeah. I mean, you know, you've got, you got Pierre Vosberg's best interests at heart. You exactly. couldn't send him to the West Country, could you, like that? No, exactly. No, exactly, yeah. Well, anyway, Neil, any, uh, keep us updated on all your events as they go by, and long may you run, sir. That is uh, the Phantom uh, uh, Scout of Standard Liège, our friend Neil, and uh, he's getting so cocky now, he boasts where he's going, and he gets food and welcomed like a hero wherever he goes, and they even try to sell him players. At some stage in 18 minutes, I am going to do Trevor Steele's new jokes. Now, remember this morning, Trevor Steele's made us ache with laughter. Trevor Steele, anyone yeah. who's listening to the Mort's Morning Show, you, yeah, we went out of control for a bit because, yeah. as you know, he's the person who faxes us with jokes that are genuinely bad. He doesn't try to be, these are not ironic. The fella does not know, is, has absolutely no sense of humour. I've got some good news and bad news. Oh, come on. I've got some good news and bad news. The good news is that he has sent us a proper... Useless Trevor Steele's joke. Excellent. The bad news is he has sent us a further additions to the list that we read this morning. Right. And I intend, if I, can get, if, I, if I can get, I intend, if I can get permission from the local fire chiefs <laughs> to read this morning's list with the new additions oh, on the end no. of it. Well, that'll be better. We'll close the show. <laughs> okay, then. All it is, and I don't I want to preempt this because I don't want to get into that. I'll go myself on migraine this morning. <laughs> Um, anyone who remembers the call about greedy football players knows that Jeff Astor apparently uh, turning up for a charity night out with these fellas uh, helped themselves to their bread and salt to and such a degree he was shouting out at one point, Any more pie? <laughs> he shouted out, Any more pie? And we said, Well, I can't believe Jeff. Apparently Jeff Astor did shout, Any more pie? That was the first thing he said to these people who had paid to be in his company all night. And so our friend here Trevor gave Steels. us variations on that. We won't mention any now. No, no. But he brought us up variations on the phrase, any more pie. Now, you may think there's very, very little comedy to be wrung out of that, but you would be absolutely right, and that's what makes <laughs> it funny. Uh, OK, bung someone through, Phil. Who's there? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, even though I appreciate you, the lines are full. You're all hanging on. Please bear with us, but we must make way for the good lady, Joanne. Uh, what line is she on? Line four. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes... Oh. Man, she's doing this last week. Here we go. Uh, line four, Joanne. Hello, Danny. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Joanne. I, 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 feel, I, I can't bear this anymore. I feel as if I know you so well now. Yeah. <laughs> what, what colour hair you got? I've got long black curly hair. Cool. <laughs> so have you done? Not, not, said he had, not said he had to suddenly dry up. Yeah. yeah. Mr. I've got an answer for everything suddenly feels something hard and jagged in his throat. That's a what? corn chip, Danny. No, all right. <laughs> and I don't want to hate people eating on mic. I'm trying not to do it, but man, these things are toasty. Uh, Joanne? Yeah? What can you bring us this morning, that you uh, this evening, that you didn't bring us this morning? Well, um, I've been to the match this afternoon. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know there was this third one who I hadn't met. Yes. Right. Well, this morning's comp this morning's wrinkle, if you will. <laughs> yep. So Joanne, um, having uh, been successfully reunited with Bo oh, yeah. One, Bo, yeah, Bo, Bo One. Uh, was then uh, entertaining Bo 2 as well. In fact, Bo 1 and 2 simultaneously. And they also entertained each other, we understand. Yes, so we did, which is... I don't know if you want to actually uh, uh, back that up on the other. They entertained each other, Joanne. Hmm. Oh, OK. <laughs> I see. I can't see that. I can't see that. To me, you are. Well, Joanne's obviously none too pleased with it either. No, I know. No, no. But even so, even Joanne, she may not want. But I, we have the, these two. These two uh, hulking as brutes. As we understand it, these two are extremely well known. So you know, it's not even for entertainment purposes. I'm sorry. It's like being a little bit pregnant. Either you are or you aren't. And I'm sorry. I, you know, you, I couldn't. It's Dan, not for ready cash. No. No, as you know, even if some... How about if somebody sends us some homosexual images from the internet with Dan and I's heads on? <laughs> then, we, then we'll have a look. We'll see if there's anything going on maybe there. Maybe we'll enjoy it. Maybe, Who knows? Maybe it'll open our eyes. Anyway, so Joanne, having successfully paired up with Brio's one... <laughs> oh, God, you've got to see it. Oh, no, don't show it to us. It's just a radio <laughs> bit. Anyway. So Joanne has entertained uh, these two players simultaneously and had a great time and said, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, it was pretty good. Then, in comes Bo 3. That's introduced it. by Bo 2. Yeah, so right. we've got, we got this third fella. Now, uh, was he playing today? He was. Mm. Did, he play, did he play any good? This is not, I'm not trying to get I just want to know. Yes, he did. Yeah. Now, well. you said you wanted to have a look to, no puns intended, size him up, just to right. say how he is. Yes, well, Bo 2 brought him into this room that I was in before the match mm. and then left, and left me and him on, on our own. 
And he's gorgeous. Is he? Oh, yeah. He's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, you know who he is, isn't it? Oh, yeah, we all know. I don't. There it comes oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I never... I do all the, I do all the leg work here, and I all use my foot, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So and um, uh, okay. Even though the so what's going to happen, Joe? Well, he walked in and he just kissed me straight away. Oh, blimey! And I was shocked. I'll tell you what, Joe. So would I. <laughs> <laughs> Providing you hadn't been with Bo one or two first, <laughs> or both together. <laughs> exactly. Hang on. Hang on. Oh really? I'm being shown a. F oh yes, uh, you're he's right. Very, very. Um. No, actually, I've revised my gay opinion. Yeah, yeah I could <laughs> see with him. Yeah, I, I yeah. could grab hold of him for a he's while. He's very presentable. No, I could grab hold of him for a while. So, uh, how do you see? The uh, a lot of people might. Hang on, say, did anything else happen then, Joe? Hang on, I just want to say before right. Joe carries on. A lot of people might say this, Joe, and she's, you know, but we happen to know every word she says is true because, the, believe me, before as you can hear, our crack research team, uh, once they lay off the crack for five minutes, <laughs> yeah. uh, the crack research team in there actually cross-reference everything. Say, yep, yep, and we've actually had some of the players ring us up and say, oh, wait, back off. We're not ever going to reveal the source here, and Joanne will disappear like uh, no, unlike snow the in summer if all of the people get too close. You must, yes, that's right. Exactly. They so must Joanne, not the he gets you straight away. He did, and yeah. he said, forget £50 for something fluffy, I'll take you on a day shopping. Did he? Yeah. Did. Now, did Joanna, he did. You, me. You, you heard my Winston Churchill anecdote last week, didn't you? I did. Well, you've got to watch out here, gal, <laughs> because otherwise, you know, uh, heaven forbid, you you know, it's, it's, it's all about coin of the realm here. You actually think he is gorgeous, yeah? He is gorgeous, yeah. By the way, it's talk radio, your pimp of the airways. <laughs> <laughs> So what's going to happen? Doesn't mean we can wake. We can, we can wear seventy style clothes. Oh, we can. Oh, big fedoras, good. yeah. Big fedoras. Yeah. Feather, feather. Anyway, so uh, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to meet him tomorrow. The thing is, I want to meet him on his own. Yeah. I don't want the other one there. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So they've they, they've done themselves a bad turn here, haven't they? They have. Yeah. yeah. This one. Woo. <laughs> no, in I'm terms of in, 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 wait there, go in terms of classical male good looks, she's moving well up the evolutionary scale. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, totally, yeah. 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 I mean, I just only know. Now, that's, that, that's, that's Joanne's instalment this week. Unless there's anything else you want to tell us, Joanne, is there? Um, no, that's it, Danny. Thank you oh, very man. much. We look forward to it. You're great. You're great. Yeah, you're, she's the best. Yeah, she is. <laughs> man, alive. I've got a loose brick in the cellar for you, sweet pea, somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, no, she's great. So, Joanne will be back next week on the morning show. We, got, we mustn't be putting on so early in the show, Dan. It's, uh, I'm looking down a very steep hill now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, my. But anyway. I've got a letter here from uh, Trevor Holmes in Lowestoft saying, uh, uh, Tom, I've written the words, caused crowd trouble. Let me All read right. you this letter, because I think we're beginning to get the message now. Fourteen years ago, while I was holding in Lincoln, I attended the first game of the season, a local derby between Lincoln City and Hull City. All right. The game end ended nil-nil, but it was the halftime entertainment that I want to tell you about. At halftime, a presenter came onto the pitch with an all-girl dancing troupe from the local disco. He went on to explain that they were going to try and beat the Ago of the Agadou world dancing record. Oh, I was at the finals of that in Paris. We and that out. he wanted everyone in the stadium to join in with the girls while they while they danced to Agadou, mm -hmm. and the crowd that day was about four and a half thousand people. So here's the scene. Now you've got four and a half thousand Lincoln and Hull fans um, either end of the evening end of the stadium, and a, a dancing troupe of women. A note in the middle of the pitch in their scanties, giving it some Agadou. Mm -hmm. The music started. The dancing girls started to do their thing and nobody in the crowd moved. Of course nobody in the crowd moved. <laughs> and a presenter was trying to whip, whip, yes. note, up a bit yep. of enthusiasm. A bit of did you hear that? Yes, I got them. A bit of enthusiasm. Oh, I said I got yeah, them. Do, it gotta, do, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm oh, going to read. It's the a present, morning. Yeah. The presenter was trying to whip up a bit of enthusiasm. <laughs> but after a while, a few Hull City fans didn't start doing the Agadou there and then, but they climbed onto the pitch and began to dance. Right. Uh, not to be outdone, the Lincoln City fans at the other end also climbed onto the pitch and started to do the Agadou dance. Um, they gradually moved closer and closer together doing the Agadou dance. You now have both sets of fans on the pitch, just a few dancers separating them. These are the actual girl dancers. Yeah. The result, inevitably, was a mass fight in the centre circle. <laughs> With the Lincoln chairman coming over the public address system appealing for calm. <laughs> uh, the Lincoln City Agadou world dancing record failed, but the crowd violence was really, really excellent. Oh, God. Uh, says Trevor Holmes what? from last <laughs> So it's women who are causing all the aggro. <laughs> they had the Agadou problems and the riot broke out. <laughs> Trevor, that is magnificent, and thank you very much oh. for that.
No, I mean, you, know, you, you could... Spot. Everything has to be saved for the website now. Um, the, the Agadu finals, and the, a riot breaks out. Phil and, Hull and Lincoln. And of course they walk together yeah, and push yeah, by now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, believe, I believe General, you know, uh, Lord uh, Colonel Haig himself yeah. tried a few times during 1916 to push towards the, uh, <laughs> the Mons lines with the Agadu line. They, they think we're doing the Agadu final, lads. <laughs> when you see the whites of the Hun's eyes, let them have it. Um, I'm going to just describe what's in that photograph. Uh, it's a. It looks like it's, an, it's something from a. Contact magazine. I'll put my thumb over it as well. I won't look because yeah. I don't want to spoil yeah, it. Yeah, don't spoil yeah, it. I won't spoil it. I have been now been handed a photo from a. Con I can tell straight away from yeah. a contact magazine. Yeah, and I love the contact yeah. magazine. Yeah. Uh, it's C O L eight nine two O. It's quite an attractive female body, isn't it? It's is quite in black in all the black kit. I've got yeah. me similar thumb over the page, yeah. and it says don't here. Take it off. Don't um, tell you. I do like. Um, I do like. Uh, uh, by the way, the, 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 the contact ads. It says here, my sexual appetite needs quenching. How about some weekend fun with? This isn't a real one. No, and if it's a couple then you've got something going because they say no time wasters no single males then you know there's something going on but this is just, I, I suspect this is some old tom who's just playing for trade or else the magazine just puts him in at a titillate set well anyway uh, okay so um uh uh 40 you're just working yourself female. up aren't i just you? want to remove my thumb now don't remove it yet just read the entire thing all right no okay. no, just, no sorry read the entire thing in the 40s 50s male read that caption the caption my sexual yeah. appetite needs quenching how about some weekend fun with this attractive 40s petite female eagerly awaiting your reply? S.A., please. Bucks. Okay. That's it. I want you now to cast your mind back. <laughs> cast your mind I back. I still haven't seen what this woman no, looks like. cast your mind back to the great Ipswich town of the uh, side of the early 80s. All right, yeah. They won the UEFA Cup. Think about their forward line. Uh, now take your Paul thumb. Mariner. Take your thumb off the, off the picture. <laughs> Gates. It's Eric Bloody Gates. It's a ringer. She's a ringer for Eric Gates. It's Eric Gates. It's Eric Gates in stockings and suspenders asking for people in the Buckinghamshire to come and have some. sex with him. I mean, it's it's. Let, let me try. It. Let me try. It. Uh, okay. My sexual appetite needs quenching. How about some weekend fun with an attractive 40s petite male eagerly awaiting your reply? S A E, please. Hi, I'm Eric Gates. <laughs> No, that's not going to happen. How no, incredible is that? Oh, look, the letter says here. I've got to look at that. Yeah. Wow, Eric. Yeah, it is. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, one doesn't like to... Uh, but that's a Older brief. may need to come in and see this. He must remember Eric I, I'm afraid you'd have to have a grudge against the old fella to go with. <laughs> he would. Oh, oh okay. he's coming through to see this. Now I, know, now I know why they black out the faces on some of these adverts, yeah. because plainly there's no trade there. Oh, okay. Trevor Weimark's one thing, but Eric Gates... Right, Romeo's on demand. He could have imported better stuff than that. We've now got to do, uh, as you heard earlier on, our friend... Oh, go on, Dan. Well, sure. Trevor Steele's a spirit and the follow-up follow to, follow to Any More Pies. Ready with the music. Let's go. What David Beckham said to Posh Spice was, Any more thigh. The American nation to Bill Clinton. Any more lies. Cyclops. Any more eyes. Mrs. Stallone. Any more sly. Chicken licking. Any more sky. Will Carling. Any more tries. John le Carré, any more spies. Dickie Bird, any more buys. <laughs> J.R. Hartley, any more flies. All Welsh women, any more dies. Winnie the Pooh, any more wives. Henry VIII, sorry, I wouldn't have any more hives. Henry VIII, any more wives. David Jack before the 1923 FA Cup final, any more highs. <laughs> Still, 70s porno actress Sylvia Cristal, any more size? <laughs> Ambiguously sexual David Bowie, any more buys? <laughs> I'm adding some here. Ronald McDonald, <laughs> Ronald McDonald, any more fries? <laughs> TV handyman Barry Bucknell, Buck any more ply? <laughs> and Batman's friend the Riddler, any more why? <laughs> Oh, God, I'm going to be Barry Bucknell, any, any more blast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for us. Oh, we got to get out. Nick Abbott's next. Um... <laughs> Well, that's that. All right, it was half past eleven next Saturday morning. Yeah. Uh, thanks, etc., etc. Et oh, once more, what did Barry Buckle say? Any more ply? <laughs> Thank you, all our thanks. Bill Wilding has been a producer today, and of course, Jamie and Tim in the other room. Uh, thanks to everyone who got through. It's been well, as good as ever. Thanks to yourselves. So we talk radio. Um, what did the Riddler say? Any more why? <laughs>